What is going on, people? You're listening to The Guard Shack. The Guard Shack's a podcast dedicated to the development of security professionals and improving the image of the private security industry. It's getting hot out there, and Mike, one of our listeners, suggested doing an episode on health concerns such as heat illnesses. So, pull up a seat in the shade, get a cup of water, and we'll get started right after this quick sponsor break. Okay, everyone, we're going to take a short break real quick while I talk about our sponsor and the company that's making the podcast, the Guard Shack itself possible, and that's Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me tell you how that's even possible. First of all, it's free. You're not going to spend a dime on podcasts I've seen with these guys. They're great. You don't even need to have access to a digital audio workstation to get going because there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit all of your podcasts right from your phone or computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more just like the Guard Shack is. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership starting right away. It's everything you want and need to make a podcast in one spot. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Now, on with the show. All right, everyone, here are some types of heat illnesses, what they look like, and what they do per CDC guidelines. The first one is a heat rash, and what it looks like is a red cluster or red clusters of small blisters that look like pimples on the skin. They're usually found on the neck, chest, groin, and even in elbow creases. What you need to do if you have a heat rash is to stay in a cool, dry place, keep the rash dry, and consider using a powder such as a uh, baby powder to soothe the rash. My take on this is if you wear body armor, this is really likely to happen in the summertime, especially if you're in a really hot climate. If you're wearing tight-fitting, non-ventilated clothing, it's likely to happen too. Restrictive clothing and heat do not mix, so you need to dress appropriately per your company guidelines for the occasion. A second type of heat illness or injury is a sunburn. We've all had these and we all know what they look like, but I'll describe it anyway. A sunburn is a painful red and warm skin area on the body. It can also lead to blisters on skin. What you need to do if you get a sunburn is stay out of the sun until your sunburn heals. You can also put cool cloths on sunburned areas or take a cool bath. I recommend if it's a severe sunburn, not taking a shower, it will beat down on there and feel like you're getting stuck with a bunch of needles. You can also put moisturizing lotion on the sunburn areas. Just don't break the blisters. And here's my take. I've had a severe sunburn before with large blisters. They're very painful and even had me run into fever and kind of sick for a couple days. Don't be like me and don't go thinking, oh, I need a tan. I won't use sunscreen because you'll end up a crispy critter and that's no fun. Another type of heat illness or injury are heat cramps. And what it looks like, it's uh, you're going to have heavy sweating during intense exercises and you can have muscle pain or muscle spasms. And what you need to do if you're experiencing heat cramps is stop physical activity and move to a cool place. Make sure you drink water or a sports drink, because if you remember from the movie Idiocracy, they got electrolytes. It's what plants crave. But seriously, if you are losing salt, the electrolytes and sodium found in sports drinks are going to be good for you. You need to seek medical help right away. If your cramps last longer than one hour, if you're on a low sodium diet, or if you have heart problems. My take on heat cramps is uh, I'll tell you I've had a mild case before with my shoulder where the muscle would spasm. It's not really fun. I couldn't tell if I had something else going on or not. Now getting to, and not that anything isn't serious here, but getting to the more serious side of heat illness and heat injuries is heat exhaustion. And what that looks like is uh, heavy sweating, cold, pale, and clammy skin, a fast but weak pulse, nausea or vomiting, muscle cramps, tiredness or weakness, dizziness, headache, fainting, or passing out. It's a long list of symptoms, but it can cause a lot of problems. Now, what you need to do if you start experiencing this is you need to move to a cool, dry place, loosen your clothes. Hey, that sounds familiar. Remember what I said about restrictive clothing earlier? You can also put cool, wet cloths on your body, or you can take a cool bath. You also need to start sipping water. You need to get medical help right away if you're throwing up your symptoms get worse, or your symptoms last more than one hour. My take is that while, like I said before, any of the heat illnesses or injuries are a serious event, heat exhaustion and heat stroke are the most critically dangerous of the ones listed. Now let's talk about heat stroke and what it looks like. You'll have a high body temperature of 103 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, hot red, dry or damp skin, a fast and strong pulse, 
headache, dizziness, nausea, confusion, and you could be losing consciousness or passing out. What you need to do if you start experiencing heat stroke is call 911 immediately. Heat stroke is very serious. You need to move the person to a cooler place. You need to help lower the person's temperature with cool cloths or a cool bath. And do not give the person anything to drink. And real quick on that cool bath part, if that person is unconscious, it seems obvious, but I'm going to say it. Don't leave them unattended in the bath. Make sure their head's above water. And here's my take on the whole thing. Don't mess around with heat stroke. Seek or get help immediately. Like I said, these are all descriptions given by the CDC, which can be found at www.cdc.gov forward slash disasters forward slash extreme heat forward slash warning dot html. I'll also put a link to this in the description. Now let's talk about some hydration and preparation to hopefully avoid any of these heat injuries or heat illnesses. It's extremely important to stay well hydrated. Try to drink at least one 8-ounce cup of water every 15 minutes if possible. Don't wait until you're thirsty to drink. But be advised, if your doctor limits the amount you drink or has you on water pills, ask how much you should drink while the weather is hot. Remember to replace lost salt and minerals. Sports drinks can help with this, but make sure you check with your doctor if you are on a low-sodium diet, have diabetes, high blood pressure, or other chronic conditions. Make sure, like I said before, you're wearing sunscreen. Stay out of direct sunlight if possible, and think about wearing a hat or checking to see if you can be provided with a shade tint of some sort. If you are working in unsafe conditions as far as heat safety is concerned, bring it to the attention of your employer. Sometimes they just might not realize it. Outdoor workers should have a shaded place to rest, and you should also have adequate access to cool, fresh drinking water as well. And here is the link to the Cal OSHA Pocket Guide for Preventing Heat Illnesses. I'll, um... I'll get through it, but I'm going to put a link to this also in the description. That address is www.dir.ca.gov forward slash dosh forward slash dosh underscore publications forward slash heat illness employee engspan dot pdf. But it's going to be easier for you to click that link anyway. All right, now that we've talked about some heat-related injuries and illnesses, we're going to go on and talk about some private security news. Coming to us out of Baytown, Texas, where on Friday, May 22nd at about 3 a.m. in the morning, a security guard at the Flying J truck stop was shot in the arm during an exchange of gunfire during what turned out to be an attempted robbery. Apparently, the, there were two suspects involved with this shooting, and they fled the area after shooting the security guard. One of the suspects was later arrested, but the other evaded police, and a handgun believed to be used during the robbery attempt was found in a nearby trash can. The captured suspect was charged with aggravated assault on a public servant, and then the detectives of Baytown PD are still seeking the second suspect. So just so you know, I obviously didn't write this article. I want to give credit to privateofficerbreakingnews.blogspot.com. I use them and I get quite a bit of my private security related news from them. They're a pretty good source it seems, so feel free to check them out. Not a sponsored ad or anything like that, just putting putting it out there where you can get some good source of information from. Now talking real quick about shootings and stuff, it doesn't say whether the guard was armed or unarmed, but as you can see, even at a truck stop, of all things, you, you can you can get shot at, even if you're not, you know, involved, if you're just there unarmed, you can get shot at. But the thing is, again, wear your body armor. It's going to protect you. It's going to save your life. So in the end, it looks like the uh, security guard's injuries were not life-threatening, and that's great to hear. But this reminds us that at any place, anywhere, any time, that shots can be fired and you can be injured. So if you haven't, consider investing in body armor and wear your body armor. If you have body armor and you don't wear it, it does you no good if it's sitting in the car sitting in the trunk and getting heat damage or hanging in your closet. If it's not on you, it's not going to protect you. And like I've said before, Safe Life Defense has the quad pay option and great prices on their products. All right, everyone, that's all I've got for today. Thanks again so much for listening to the Guard Shack. You can send us an email at guardshackpc at gmail.com and let us know what you want to hear us talk about in the next couple episodes. Go ahead and spread the word because you can find us wherever podcasts or listen to pretty much you can find us on anchor spotify apple podcast stitcher google podcast breaker podcast go and many more you can also find us on social media at facebook.com forward slash guard shack pc you can also find us on instagram.com forward slash guard shack pc or if you're on the mobile at guard shack pc
You can also find us on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the description below because it is not custom and it is too garbly goop and long to be spouting out here. If you find us on social media, make sure you give us a like, follow, subscribe, what have you. If you find us on YouTube and subscribe, check out our videos. Right now, we just got some copies of the episodes up there, but I'm going to be working on doing some product reviews of the items I personally carry on my belt or have carried in the past, down to the belt and pouches themselves, the type of ammunition I carry, my firearm that I carry, the weapon light I have, my flashlight, you name it. I'll go over it. I'll go over maintenance on weapons too, even gear. I'm probably going to throw out something how to polish boots because I see too many people looking like they polished their boots with a melted Hershey's bar. So again, thanks so much for listening. Stay tuned. Let us know what you want to hear. So one more time, find us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Give us a follow. If you find us on one of your favorite podcast platform, go ahead and subscribe or follow us on that so you'll get notified as soon as a new episode drops. I try to publish my episodes Sunday nights, so they'll be there for you first thing Monday morning or overnight if you're working a grave shift like most of us do. As always, stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time.